So this right here just came in the mail. Let me talk for my esophagus, a bottomless stop of this Acropolis, a metropolis of preposterous optimist, Botropolis. Or, should I say, Earthrise Galactic Odyssey Collection Botropolis Rescue Mission. What a clunky name. So the Galactic Odyssey Collection is this new thing from the Earthrise toy line, and it's basically Generation Selects, but like in multi-pack flavor, and with this gimmick of taking place in other planets, and it's exclusive to Amazon, and yeah, I'll just give it to you straight, Doc. The amount of people who care about this info are the same people who bought the Ratchet and Lifeline 2-pack solely for Lifeline. That is, nobody. We just like it because it's super ultra nerdy repaints, and we love that in this household. It's okay to admit that. So this here is a bit of a six-pack of sorts. No, not that kind of six-pack with a pair of Earthrise Deluxes and two additional pairs of MicroMasters. Now, it would only be classy to start with Ironworks, so let's get to Ironwork! Ironworks is the same mold as the previous Ironworks figure, however, this time forged from the fires of white and blue hues. Apparently, this color scheme was inspired by Skylinks, which, I mean, hey, I'd go outside just like Skylinks every day if I could, so party on! I think I may actually prefer this deco to the original. It just looks so pristine and friendly. I love me a robot with both a mouth plate and a visor, and the way they've picked out the silver paint with the sky blues just looks so instantly striking. Also adore how the yellow and black of these caution rectangles break up all the white. The colors are so greatly distributed, and there's just enough of everything. The red, white, and blue work so well, and it doesn't even come across as gaudy or nationalistic. So that's always a plus. Articulation is really strong on this little iron friend. It's just about standard for a typical deluxe class figure, but the legs in their arm actually bend super far, double jointed style. As with other figures of this mold, Ironworks transforms by tearing apart their limbs and reassembling them to resemble a base. But they'll still never be as broken as my morale, so I'll give them that. I assume this here is supposed to be a battle station of some kind. I admit it doesn't look like much, but I can't help but get a kick out of it. It iron works for me. <laughs> As is typical for these sorts of base modes, the fun gets dialed up when you add some MicroMasters to the scene and give them their own little stronghold. Mode number three here is this shovel hook ironworks tower thing. Is this like anything they have at an ironworks plant? I don't know. But regardless, I do like it as a small playset for your little guys. I love how their arm can actually both pick stuff up and shoot things at the same time. Such efficiency. Now for ironworks' main alt mode, his ironworks station. I always found the mode to be rather minimal, but still very charming and cute nonetheless. You can pose around this arm hook piece for hours of non-stop thrills, and I love the additional detail given to the front side here. Makes it look a bit less plain than his original figure. Lastly, I love this exhaust pipe here. It just gets my mind going on the intricacies of this micro world. This mode is where it becomes most apparent that it's based on that G1 base set, and it's just such a weird callback in the first place that one can't help but admire it. And yes, I am making that opinion for you, just so we're clear. Finally, they can lock onto other base modes, but hey, spoilers. Now onto Overair, the flyest airport anywhere. This toy is modulator mold mates with Earthrise Airwave, but given this lavish retouching, this time an Autobot flavor. If you have Airwave, you should roughly know what to expect, but this new color scheme just brings it to life in such a new and interesting way. The contrasting dark gray with the eye-catching gold is so appealing. I especially love that blue head and golden face. This head sculpt is just so weird and different than what we're used to, I've absolutely grown to love it. It's almost kind of drone-like, you know? This is possibly my favorite version of the mold that we've gotten so far. Which is good, because if it was bad, I probably still would have bought it. And look at the subtle red outlining of the gold on his chest. That's such a small detail, but for me it works so well. I don't know why they included it, but I'm glad that they did. Overair transforms into all the modes Airwave can do as well, so first, here they are in their, I suppose, armored shelter stronghold mode. I do think this is the weakest of the four since it doesn't look like anything, but it does do an okay job replicating the thing it's supposed to look like. You can stick around a few MicroMasters to make it look better, but it still does kind of look like a big pile of nothing. But let's get them into their actual exciting modes. Now here they are transformed into what TF Wiki is calling a treaded aircraft carrier. This thing is actually really fun in its own way. It looks pretty cool, and I admire how sturdy the bottom part holds up, especially considering how the last mode was flop central. Apparently they decided to dip this toy in some radical sauce because the yellow and black caution stripes just really do it for me. Lastly, here they are in their airbase mode with these little tiny runways for little tiny planes. Thoroughly appreciate how the window section is actually painted. That one small detail really does it for me and makes it look so much more exciting than Airwave. I do think the gold paint on this tower mode looks a bit much in this mode, kind of looking a bit gaudy, but at least it distincts this figure's parts from their siblings. Speaking of which, if you're lucky enough to own all the variants of these molds, you can smash them together to form these brutish buttes. 
You can turn ironworks here into an iron giant, and likewise, over air becomes oversized. It adds wonderfully to the playability. Who knows what kind of fan modes you can create if you're crazy enough. Now these dancing deluxes also come with this quartet of Micromasters. Starting off here, this is Moonrock and Missile Master. So far I'm really loving the color matching on this dynamic duo. Articulation is pretty much what you'd expect, so they'll never do the dab, but at least they can oh, shake their fist at someone. Their transformation is really fun and simple, like you'd want from some little guys. They combine together to form a missile transport. I really like this thing. Don't know what it has to do with the space theme of the set, but it's still cool. For such a small thing, there's so much sculpted in detail, it's actually kind of insane. So yeah, I absolutely get a kick out of these two. They're just two small guys who perform a gimmick and they feel really good doing it. Missile Master and Moon Rock rocks the house down. Up next is Fuser and Blastmaster. Lots of masters in the set. What is this, Doctor Who? I sort of think these two get the shorter end of the stick here. My biggest issue is that Blastmaster doesn't seem to want to stand unless you bend their knees at exactly the right angle. But still, for what they are, they're still a fun odd couple. I like Fuser's sculpted in blasters and long thighs. And they got some kibble going on, but their Micromasters, I think, will survive. Plus, the wings are 100% the reason Blastmaster is able to stand at all, so I'm thankful. Transformation is actually pretty innovative in that it doesn't transform in the exact same way as every other Micromaster ever made. Which leads us to this pretty cute little spaceship. The color scheme and patterns are apparently meant to serve as a reference to Stormjet, one of the Micromaster aerial bots. What? <laughs> you don't know who Stormjet is? You don't know literally everything about the Micromaster aerial bots? Um, fake fan. So yeah, while I'm confident that whoever thought of this definitely got shoved into a locker as a kid, I'm glad they thought of it. It made me do research on the Micromaster Aerial Bots and the Transformer with the least creative name in the universe, which was pretty fun. I have such an interest in space exploration and discovery, so this shuttle mode, as well as the set as a whole, just really appeals to me. It's a master of blasting into my heart, you know? I wonder if Devastator could fit in here. Now that we're done looking at the individual players, let's look at the main event here, shall we? Now this right here, I assume, is Botropolis, as in the Botropolis named in this set. Isn't that where the movie Robots took place? Now this thing actually serves as both a shout out to the G1 rocket base playset as well as Botropolis, that one place from GoBots. That's so nerdy, I can just feel the grease piling up on my face as we speak. When everything's all put together like this, it just makes for an irresistible space city. It's just something that reaches deep down inside you to that childlike side that still loves small bases your little figures could jump around in. The set also includes this rocket thing that the shuttle latches onto, which then plugs onto the airport slash, I guess, space station? I'm not sure why there'd be an ironworks facility next to a rocket site, but you know what? It's fine. The set is running hard on vibes, and the vibes are, unmistakably, here. But like all things in life, it gets so much better when you add Skylinks. I can't get enough of this whole base mode connecty gimmick throughout Earthrise, and this makes it all the more adventurous and otherworldly. Now they can all escape to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. SPACE! And if you want to, you can add all your other modulators to make a small little community for your little bots to thrive. Being real here, I feel this truly makes getting those Micromasters and other modulators worth it. So overall, hex yeah, I love this set. It fits right up my alley of transforming robots and incorporates the space exploration element in the mini diorama world building, which in itself is super fun. As a set of repaints, it's great in its own right, but also as a shout out to the more obscure parts of TF history. Like, it's an exclusive box set featuring homages to the Micromaster Aerial Bots, G1 Micromaster bases, which themselves turn into a reference to G1 Countdown's rocket base, and to top it all off, are also wrapped in a callback to the GoBots. That's the nerdiest thing I've ever heard. So naturally, it's a perfect fit for me. Please leave a like on your way out if you can, and thank you for indulging in my robot purchasing impulses.